Hey guys, I just finished watching Ryan Johnson's Knives Out. Now, I actually purchased this movie before I watched Glass Onion, but I actually watched Glass Onion first. Uh, so, <laughs> I had some uh, kind of negative expectations going in because I knew Daniel Craig had the heavy accent, but uh, I feel like all of the problems I had with Glass Onion those elements are still here, but it's like, for some unspeakable reason, it's working much more effectively. So I'll try to put that into words, but I'm not gonna lie, it is very similar to Glass Onion, but in my opinion, I think this is way, way better than uh, Glass Onion. So, we're basically, oh yeah, there's gonna be a lot of spoilers in this, by the way, but um, because there's so many twists and stuff that it, like, even if I spoil something for you, it's going to change, I guarantee you. So I'm not going to tell you exactly what happens. I'm just going to tell you what we think is happening for the majority of the movie. So we're following this wealthy family, and the head of that family uh, has died, and it appears to be suicide, but it's a weird suicide because it's like a self-inflicted knife wound, which is an odd way to kill yourself. So the, this uh, amazing detective mysteriously shows up to the scene, and while the local police are getting ready to deem this as a suicide, and by the way, I'll mention, I really like that one actor that played that uh, creepy guy in Get Out. Um, I don't, what's his name? Let, let me just pull up his name, because he's, yeah, I have him right here. Lakeith Stanfield. I've now seen him in only two movies, and I actually, he really stood out in this, considering how much of an all-star cast we had here. Like, you had Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, Daniel Craig, Chris Evans, Anna de Armas, and he actually managed to stand out amongst the crowd, so I definitely would like to see more of him in the future. Uh, we also got the 13 Reasons Why Girl in this. I absolutely hate that show. So unfortunately, I don't think I can ever watch anything with her in it and actually, like, enjoy it, because she's just ruined. In my brain, she's just 13 Reasons Why, uh, which is just the worst show I've ever seen, so... Uh, and we've also got one of the IT actors in here, too. And we've also got Frank Oz, who's like the voice and uh, puppeteer behind Yoda. So there are some, like, big names in this. And, um, so basically we're following Anna de Armas, who is this uh, caretaker and nurse of the head of the guy who died. And this is the spoiler. Um, so it turns out she actually had a medication mix-up, and she, you know rightfully at the time blames herself for the his death and then uh, the head of the house basically spins this whole thing and just tells her this crazy plan to try and make it look like she like it's pretty ridiculous in hindsight but um he he's just trying to make sure she doesn't get in trouble and her family doesn't get deported because their her mother is illegal or something like that um and then we have chris evans show up who's this like snobby uh, outcast of the family who's trying to get his inheritance and every every single one of the family members is quite unlikable just because of how greedy they are but at the same time it is actually kind of interesting morality wise I'd be interested to hear more thoughts of like where you stand on that like should Anna de Armas's character give back the uh, inheritance it's tough I, I, I actually really can't say for certain yes or no me personally if I was in her situation I would just keep it because those family members are kind of dicks and uh, you know that money would change your life so obviously you're gonna look up for yourself first but on the other hand it's like I don't know maybe she should give it back so I can't really say for sure but that's an interesting angle and um, yeah let's just hop into why this movie so effective so as far as negatives go well there's really none um, I would say there was one like this movie's full of clever twists and I would say there was one single twist I didn't like which was the uh, you slash Hugh moment. So basically, one of the characters is on her like deathbed, and she says to Anna de Armas, "You did this." But she actually, I guess I didn't even think about this. She says, "Hugh did this," like with a little bit of. It's like if you say whom instead of, you know, or what instead of what. That's what I. That's what you're supposed to think it is. But it turns out she wasn't saying you. She was saying Hugh, which is like the alternative name of Chris Evans' character. That's a little bit stupid for me. But that's really the only dumb moment in this movie, and this is a very long movie, so it is, in general, a very smart and clever movie. I think it's written very well. Ryan Johnson is not really a director I care about or, like, really particularly root for, to be honest. Because Last Jedi is awful, Glass Onion is awful, and Looper 
those are the three movies I think I've seen by Anne Blooper is also quite, um, I don't even know how to put it into words, but it's like, it's like Christopher Nolan-esque in terms of how, uh, uh, crazy it can get. But Christopher Nolan delivers in other areas. So, yeah. Um, in general, this is just a very clever movie that is well written, has a great cast, very good acting. I would say this is Anna de Armas' best role yet. And um, to be honest, even though Daniel Craig is Bond, that's who I look at him as, I'm surprised. He's actually really able to uh, escape that sort of um, image. I really do like him as Ben Wan now, I'm not going to lie. In Glass Onion, I absolutely shat on Daniel Craig just because of the accent. but. I don't know why. It didn't bother me this time. It really didn't. It honestly God didn't. I think it's just because the movie was good. It's like when you watch bad movies, all of the kind of annoying stuff get exponentially more annoying. And then when you watch good stuff, good movies, you can kind of, ex you know, forget about that stuff. And it doesn't even come to surface. So I did not have a problem with his accent this time. Um, so yeah, honestly, just a really fun movie that kept me on the edge of my seat. I was very intrigued throughout. And I was really dying to know what really happened. And uh, it's a movie that earns your time. And unlike Glass Onion, so Glass Onion was a pretentious waste of time because it like there's just so much dumb rich boy shit in there. But this is you know this is the same thing in the in the sense that the family's wealthy and the sets are well laid out, um, and they do have kind of pompous art in the background. But that's the thing. It's background. It's in Glass Onion, it's the center stage. It's like, that's the most important thing. It's like, look at all this cool art and all this cool expensive stuff I have. It's like, I don't care about your stuff. For example, like the Mona Lisa in Glass Onion and his stupid car that he had on, like his Lamborghini that he had on his roof. It just made me roll my eyes because it's so pretentious and stupid. But in this, it's just like, you know, they just happen to be a rich family that just happens to be in a wealthy house. It's not like shoved in your face or anything. So it's a way of introducing classiness in a more candid way and uh, not so in your face, look at how cool I am kind of way. And also Glass Onion thought it was so clever and it had a lot of crowd demanding uh, scenes where it's like, I could tell Ryan Johnson's like so proud of himself. This movie again is, it does the same thing, but it's like, it earns it more. I felt like it was way more impactful in this movie and it earns it so much more because the general experience is just better than Glass Onion. So again, all those kind of bad elements are turned into positives now. So the original Knives Out is going to get an 8 out of 10. I thoroughly enjoyed it and I'll, I would definitely want to see this again. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching.